when you wish upon the following star, your dreams can come true. Who are Disney babies here? <laughs> okay, so it seems like most of us are Disney babies, and we uh, we believe that when we were still children, that when we wish upon a falling star, our dreams can come true. Now, can we uh, prove that that is true or not? We will find out at the end of our discussion this afternoon as we talk about the speed of God. We already learned from our previous science uh, courses that the speed of light has a very large quantity of 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second squared. Now this very large quantity, uh, when we are going to take a look at it, they had uh, said that we can move or turn around the world 8 times for only 1 second. Can you imagine yourself going around the world eight times for only one second? Like one, two, three, four, five, seven. In one second. Around the world. <laughs> from Canada, from Toronto to Toronto. Okay, so this very large quantity, which is three times 10 to the eight meter per second, had been determined by a French scientist named Armandy Hippolyte Louis. He made use of this apparatus wherein there is a mirror, there is a repeating notch wheel, and of course, a very intense source of light. Now, the wheel and the mirror are 8.6 kilometers apart from each other. The speed of light goes through the mirror. It is being interrupted by the wheel that has 720 notches that can repeat for up to 100 times per second at a varied speed. Now the light will go through the mirror and of course there is that uh, characteristic of light that can reflect. So the light is shown to a semi-transparent mirror that could be observer's eye. And of course comes a theory. And the theory becomes a law. So not only if you zoom, there was another scientist in the name of James Clerk Maxwell who proved that or determined that the quantity of the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. And he made use the physical constants of electromagnetic waves. From Collins Law and Gauss Law, we have the permittivity of free space having the value of 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 column squared per newton meter squared. And from a Pierce law, we have also the constant value of the permeability of free space, which is four pi times 10 to the negative seven Tesla meter per ampere. Okay, now, what will be the relevance of these two constant values? James Clerk Matto gave the formula of the speed of light to be equal to one over the square root of the product of the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space. Now let us prove if James, James Maxwell is correct or not. Grab your calculators. Do your mental math. Can you do the mental math for this? Yeah. All right. We have our speed of light to be equal to one over the square root of the permittivity multiplied by the permeability of free space. And let us see if it is really three times 10 to the eight meter per second. Fastest finger. Tell me the yeah. answer. Yeah. Okay, so we got the speed of light to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second by using James Kirk Max's formula. C is equal to 1 over the square root of the product of the permittivity and permeability of the space. Now there are already two scientists. Fizu with his experiment in the laboratory by using his apparatus and James Clerk Maxwell's mathematical equation. The 
Okay, so what is the relevance of this event life? Of course, we have Einstein's very famous E is equal to mt squared. The speed of light is applied for the mass energy equivalence equation. And that is another topic, which is quantum mechanics. And second, we can estimate the travel time of light by just simply using the very basic um, formula of speed, which is equal to distance per unit. Time. And this formula is just derived from the very basic uh, formula in physics. We can compute for the travel time of light to just be equivalent to the distance over the speed. Okay, now I have this example of an explosion of a supernova. Kindly read everybody. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so what is our our problem is all about? It's all about a supernova that exploded. Uh, years ago, okay, so um, it has been said that the last two of these supernova had had been seen 1604 and 1987. So this was years ago already. Okay, now we are asked when did the explosion occur given that it is 1.6 times 10 to the 21 meter from Earth. So who can now compute for the travel time of light using our given, which is the distance, and of course the speed of light, which has the constant value of 3 times 10 to the 8. Can you give me the answer? Pass this finger. Five point eight. Point eight times ten. Twelve. Yeah, one two. Seconds. Okay, now can we convert this into years? Yes. Okay, doing our our conversion units and our dimensional analysis. Give me the number of years. <laughs> okay, 3,600 seconds is one hour, 24 hours in one day, 365 days in a year. And dimensional analysis, please. 1.7 5.3, I, I think this is 22. Is it? 12? Oh, 12. It's 14, but you point. 13, but it's 12. Yeah, it's 12. 12. 12. Okay, number of years. 1.7 into 10. 5. And that is 170,000? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it is approximately 170,000 years. So the explosion happened 170,000 years and the light travel, it reaches out after 170,000 years. So explosion and then we see it. 170,000 years later. With that being said, we can say that when we look at the stars, we see over a billion years into the past. So can we now conclude that when we wish upon a star, our dreams will really come true? Thank you.